it's Alexis and today I will be talking about necrotizing pneumonia aka pulmonary gangrene. Necrosis is defined as tissue death. <clears throat> necrotizing pneumonia is secondary to pneumonia so if you already have pneumonia there is a slight chance that you could develop necrotizing pneumonia aka pulmonary gangrene. Fortunately necrotizing pneumonia is very rare. It is important to note also that pneumonia and necrotizing pneumonia is community acquired. Before I go into the actual discussion of this disease, I want to define a couple of terms for you guys that I will be using throughout the rest of this video. The first term I want to go over is exotoxin. Exotoxin is basically a toxin that is released from a specific strain of bacteria. The next term that I'm going to define for you guys is leukocidin. I hope I'm saying that right because the spelling is gnarly. A leukocidin is basically a pore forming toxin. So it is an exotoxin that is released from a strain of bacteria that unfortunately forms pores and stuff. The next term I want to talk to you guys about is empyma. Empyma is the occurrence of pus filling between the visceral pleura and the lungs. The next term I want to talk to you guys about is Staphylococcus aureus. Now, if you're in class with me, you probably remember this term from microbiology. Um, it's basically Staphylococcus aureus, that's just what it is. And it is the most impactful bacteria in human existence. It is known to cause a lot of diseases for us, unfortunately. Following that, I wanna talk about MRSA or methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aurea. This is basically a strong Staphylococcus aureus that is very difficult to treat with antibiotics. And in some instances, like that of pulmonary gangrene, it can make the condition worse. We have bilobectomy, a bilobectomy the surgical removal of a lung lobe. Last but not least, we have decortication. Decortication is basically the surgical removal of empyma, which again is the filling of pus between the visceral pleura and the lungs. It is important to note that empyma can occur without necrotizing pneumonia. So it just so happens that empyma happens with necrotizing pneumonia and without necrotizing pneumonia but it is very specific to this disease as well the causes of regular pneumonia are bacteria the most common bacteria is known to cause regular pneumonia and necrotizing pneumonia are staphylococcus aureus staphylococcus pyogenes and staphylococcus pneumoniae and also MRSA. These bacteria, once they make their way into the parenchyma, can form pantin valentine leukocidin. This is a pore forming exotoxin that can be released into the lungs with the development of this disease, which causes the abscess and gangrene. Next, we're gonna get into the symptoms of necrotizing pneumonia. Basically, necrotizing pneumonia symptoms are that of regular pneumonia. That includes cough, hypotension, dyspnea, and other flu-like symptoms, such as fever and not feeling so good, just in general, and hypoxia, and also septic shock. Now, luckily for adults, shock comes in two stages. We have compensating shock and decompensating shock. I'm going to get into the clinical findings surrounding pulmonary gangrene. Basically, pulmonary gangrene consolidates lung tissue. It completely kills lung tissue and restricts all blood flow to that part of the lung which is affected. Usually, necrotizing pneumonia occurs in the left or right lower lobes of the lungs. This diagnosis of necrotizing pneumonia is usually found using CT scans, computed tomography scans, and chest x-rays. It is also very important to note, and I'm sure I've said it before, that antibiotic treatment of necrotizing pneumonia can cause symptoms to be worse or the disease itself to progress. Through research of my topic, I was able to find a case study 
published by the Canadian Respiratory Journal, which tracked that of five patients who had experienced necrotizing pneumonia. Fortunately, three of these patients survived, while two unfortunately did not. Case one follows that of a 56-year-old truck driver who acquired pneumonia, then acquired necrotizing pneumonia. His symptoms included shortness of breath, fever, and a cough. His cough was non-productive. Unfortunately, this patient acquired MRSA, so his necrotizing pneumonia was caused by MRSA in which the antibiotic treatment that was initially given to him made his symptoms worse. This patient did develop fibrothorax, aka empyma, and went through decortication. Unfortunately, this patient did not make it. Case study two follows that of a 32-year-old male. CT scans revealed that he developed necrotizing pneumonia in his right lower lobe of his lungs. He also had empyma, which is crazy. His specific case of necrotizing pneumonia was caused by the bacteria necrotizing pneumonia. Therefore, antibiotic treatment did kind of help him out just a little bit. He also underwent surgical removal of his empyma, aka decortication. This patient was luckily discharged to go home after an extensive stay in the ICU. The third case study follows that of a 30-year-old woman. Her specific case of necrotizing pneumonia was caused by Klebsiella pneumoniae. This is a very antibiotic-sensitive bacteria. Fortunately, antibiotic treatment did help her, but unfortunately, she also did not make it following decortication. Case four follows that of a 64-year-old male who acquired symptoms of pneumonia. He did not have any flu-like symptoms. However, he did have a shortness of breath, hypoxia, and a cough. He developed necrotizing pneumonia also in his right lower lungs. His necrotizing pneumonia included abscesses, very small abscesses, which were surgically removed. He received a right lower lobe by lobectomy and was sent home relatively soon after surgery and an extensive stay in the ICU. Case five follows that of a 36 year old woman. Her symptoms lasted for about 10 days before she decided to pay a visit to her ER. She also had dyspnea and a cough. She also developed empyma and she received the surgical removal of her empyma or decortication. She was also intubated and given a tracheostomy. Fortunately for her, she was also sent home. Necrotizing pneumonia or pulmonary gangrene is as scary as it gets as far as I'm concerned. Well, at least for now, as I have a lot of learning to do about lung diseases, um, the development of them and the treatment of them. Luckily, the development of technology and science can help us further understand these diseases and hopefully someday we have an idea as to how to prevent regular pneumonia, henceforth preventing necrotizing pneumonia. Thanks for watching my video. Please, if you have the time, like this video and subscribe to my channel.